All right, what I'd like to do in this video is explain the basic idea of dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis. This is basically a fancy way of saying unit conversion unit conversion because we are changing units I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw these out there to you there are two concepts that you need to know to understand dimensional analysis the first concept that I'm gonna to explain to you is this one it's kind of kind of silly but this will help you a lot in understanding dimensional analysis Okay, so let's say we've got a green square and we are going to change this green square into a yellow square. Sorry, I'm having trouble drawing this. Okay, so if I were to ask you what is the difference between this green square and this yellow square? They're exactly the same size they weigh the same amount, they have the same personality, they're both happy, whatever, they're exactly the same. The, what's the difference? The difference here is that this square is green and this one is yellow. I'm sure most of you know that. <laughs> now the reason I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, the reason I'm telling you this is because I want to stress that the idea of dimensional analysis is taking something that you have and changing it into something different that that's exactly the same I'm sorry <laughs> that came out wrong you we're taking something that we have and changing the way it looks but it's gonna be exactly the same sorry that came out really really weird <laughs> okay so this green this green square is the same thing as this yellow square right it look it's 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 it, it, the weight of it is the same it's the same size and all it just looks different okay Fair enough. You understand that concept, I'm sure, by now. All right. The second concept that you need to understand is, okay, let's say, what is 5 divided by 5? What is this equal to? This is equal, this is equal to 1. I'm sure most of you know that. But why? Why does 5 over 5 equal 1? I'm going to go ahead and generalize something for you. It's kind of a rule. So anything that you have on top that you also have, like a replica on the bottom, if you have, if you have it like this, they're always going to cancel out or they're going to disappear and turn into 1. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I have... A, B, C, D divided by A, B, C, D. Well, I have an A on top and an A on bottom. So these cancel out. I have a B on top and B on bottom. C on top, C on bottom, and D on top and D on bottom. Because I have whatever, you know, since I have an A up here and an A down there, they cancel out. Just like the 5 over the 5. That's the, that's the idea. If you can understand these two things I just told you, you will be an ex excellent dimensional analysis <laughs> analyst dimensional analyst okay so let me see maybe I can do another example if you have uh, let's see if I have a smiley face up here and I have a smiley face down there they cancel out they equal to one <laughs> you get the idea now let's go on to an example of this dimensional analysis. Let's say we are given five minutes, okay? And they ask us, hey, I want you to change these five minutes into seconds. Into seconds. Now, what we need to do here is kind of like the first concept I told you. Remember, we have a box like this, and we're going to change it into another box of the exact same size. The only difference is that this box looks different than this box, or this square looks different than that square. 
This one's yellow, that one's blue. They're the same size, they just look different. They mean the same thing. So it's kind of like if I had one dollar and my best friend had a hundred pennies, he could give me those hundred pennies in exchange for the dollar. They're the same thing, they just look different. Okay, now let me show you the trick to doing this. This is a pretty easy one. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more advanced one in a second, but the trick is whatever you're given, you write that first. So I was given five minutes, so I write that on my paper. Okay, that's easy. Write down five minutes. Now, you draw this multiplication sign and this horizontal line. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we're trying to get rid of these minutes and get left with these seconds. We want to get rid of minutes and get left with seconds. Now, if we go back up a little bit to this second rule, remember how I said whatever you have on top, if you, if you have like an A on top and an A on bottom, they cancel out, or if you have a five on top and a five on bottom, they cancel out? Well, we're gonna be applying that concept right here. We need to get rid of these minutes. These minutes are on top. And the reason they are, they're already on top, is because we can think of this as five minutes divided by one, because anything over one is the same thing, right? So this is, we can just say this is five minutes over one. So five minutes is in the top, one is in the bottom. That's what, we, we wrote that first, that's what we were given. We need to get seconds, that's our goal. So how do we get, how do we change these minutes into seconds? Well, we need to get rid of them. How do we get rid of them? By putting something that we have on top that also on bottom, if that makes sense. So we have minutes on the top. Let's put them on the bottom over here. And we want to get left. We want to be left with seconds up there. All right. So remember how I said anything you have on top that you also have on bottom is going to cancel like this. So these are going to cancel. Let me just take a step back before I finish this problem. Let me go right here. Let me just use this space. If I were to ask you what is one half times two thirds, I'm sure you know how to do this. That's pretty easy. One half times two thirds. Well, I have a two down here and a two up there, so this is equal to one thirds. Because this two canceled out with this two because I had a two up there now and I had a two down here, now I'm left with, with these two things, the one on top and the three on bottom. So that's where I got this answer from. It's the same sort of thing. I have five minutes down up here. Now I got to put them down here to get rid of them and get left with what I need. But in order to do this, we need to do we need to introduce what is what is called a conversion factor. This thing in green brackets is a conversion factor. All right. This means that whatever is in these brackets has to be equal. So if we want to get rid of these minutes, we have to say, okay, we want to get minutes into seconds. What do I know? How, how are these guys related? How are minutes related to seconds? Well, I know that there's 60 seconds in one minute. So let's write that down. There's one minute. For every one minute, there is 60 seconds. There are 60, 60 seconds. Okay. The reason I did this, again, I'm stressing this a lot, is so that you know, this is like, you know, go back to the square thing. It's going to look different, but mean the same thing. I need to change these minutes into seconds. In order to do that, I have to write an equivalent statement. An equivalent statement. This is an equivalent. Sorry, that. This is an equivalent statement, which is also known as a conversion factor. That is an E. I'm sorry, my handwriting's not very good. All right, so how to get rid of that? So whenever we do this, what's going to happen? All right, the minutes are going to go away. We're going to be left with seconds in the numerator. That's what we need. So minutes are gone. We're left with seconds. Let's type this in our calculator or do it in our heads. Five times sixty. This is equal to three hundred. And this is 300 seconds, because that's what we needed. That's what we need, right? Because whatever we have left up here is going to be the same thing as what our answer will be. Let me do another example real quick before we run out of time. So let me do it up here. Example. Let's say that I was given three years 
That's my given, three years. And I want to convert this or figure out what is three years in terms of hours? What is it in terms of hours? How many hours are in three years? Well, let's do my little trick. Let's write three years. We write what we're given. Okay, fair enough. We write the uh, multiplication with the horizontal line. Now, same sort of thinking here. We're going to convert a yellow square into a blue square. Same thing. All right, how do we get rid of years? Well, we put years down here. Okay, so now they're going to be they're going to disappear. But what do we need? We need to get hours, right? We need hours. Okay, but how how many hours? Sorry. How many hours are in a year? We don't know this conversion because remember this is this is a conversion factor just like the other one it's a conversion factor this has to be an equivalent statement for us to do this we don't know how many hours are in a year so instead of putting hours we're gonna put something that we know what do we know about years I know that one year is 365 days right so let's put days there so we know that there's 365 days in one year right so if I was to do this calculation right now, type this in my calculator, I would do 3 times 365, and that would give me how many days are in 3 years. But I don't want days. I want hours. So I have to keep on going. So right now, days is we have days right now. So now we're working with days. And remember, this was over 1. That's how we knew this was in top, and that was on bottom, to get top and bottom cancel. Okay. All right, we've got days. We need to get hours. How do we get from days to hours? Well, we got to get rid of days first, right? So we can put a days down there. So days will cancel up there and down here. We want to get to hours, but can we go straight from days to hours? I think we can. How many hours are in a day? There are 24 hours in one day, right? Simple enough. So we do it like this. And let's just double check to make sure everything canceled. Years, years canceled with years, days canceled with days, and I'm left with this 24 with the hour. That's that's what I really need is the hour, and that meets that. So everything is good. So now when we type this in our calculator, we type this in our calculator. We type three times 365 times 24. And when you do this, let's see what we get. 3 times 365 times 24, we get 26,280 hours. And that's how many hours are in three years. That's a basic breakdown. Uh, I'll show you some more advanced videos or some more advanced uh, examples in the next video. See you then.